Hallelujah. Praise God. It's not about me. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Christian House of Praise is live. Yes, we are. God bless you. Welcome yeah. to our TNT Tuesday night live stream. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We're excited to be back. We thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, we pray that you all have had an exceptional end of the year, despite all that we have experienced, all that has gone on and yet continues to go on. We are just thankful and grateful that the Lord has seen us through. He's bringing us through. We're going onward and forward in him. Praise God and in his word. And so on tonight, Pastor Whitley and I are very excited to be back here with you all. We had a very um, restful, praise God, uh, Christmas holiday. And so we're so thankful and grateful uh, just to be back here, just to share again the word of God. And so at this time, praise God, um, as you all come in the room, as, you, as always, you know, we ask that you get your Bible you get you a pen, get you some paper, yes. take some notes. Take Maybe you got notes. a good memory, but it's always good to write something down. We may amen. say something worth writing down. I, amen, <laughs> amen. We just might say something. <laughs> We're still in our Secrets to Christian Living series. Yes. And yes. Uh, we're going to open up with prayer and we're going to give you the scriptures for tonight. And then we're going to do a quick review because we know we've had Christmas, we've had New Year's, and mm -hmm. now we're still jumping back into this. So we want to yes. keep you abreast of what's going on. I know maybe Amen. some of you have forgotten where we dropped off at, where we stopped at. So we want to bring you up to speed. Amen. Amen. So let us open up with prayer. All minds clear. Glory you, to Jesus. God. You, we Lord. ask right now, too, as you're joining us, hit that share, share button. Share button. Hit that share button. Yes. Share this with somebody else. And if Thank this is your first same, time Pastor. visiting with us, amen, we love to have you with us. We know that you could have went to any other service, but you've chosen TNT, Tuesday Night Teaching. Yes. And we're glad to have you Bless with us. Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Those of you that may have prayer requests or want to join this ministry, go online to the website. Please fill out the prayer request card, fill out the online ministry card, and join us and become a covenant partner with us. Amen. 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 Let us let us open up with prayer, and then Thank we'll you, jump right into the scriptures. Yes. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Bless Lord, you, as we Lord. come before thy throne of grace tonight, you, Father. Jesus. Father, we pray now, Father, that you would arrest our attention, Father, yes, that you would corner our conscience, Father yes, God, Lord, that Jesus. you would clear our minds of the toils of the day, Father, yes, that we may be able to receive your word tonight, Father. Father, I ask now for clarity of mind and clarity of heart, Father, yes, that your people everywhere, Father God, will be glorified, edified, yes. Father God, and motivated by your word. Yes. Father, it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. And the people of God said, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Again, we're so excited about tonight. Um, as Pastor said, he is going to uh, give a review um, of the previous um, lessons that were given in this series as we come into part two um, of the pragmatics of Christian living, which is our topic one tonight. And so before we do that, Pastor, do you want me to read the scriptures now or do you want to go on and start with our... I can give the review. Amen. Okay. See, uh, the Secrets of Christian Living. That's the series that we were in. Yes. And on December the 1st, I taught you from the, from the topic of the series, Secrets to Christian Living. Mm -hmm. And we went to John, the 15th chapter. Some of yes. you may remember. For some of you, this is a review. For others, this is new. Yes. But we want everybody to be up to speed. Why are you doing a review? Because we don't want to jump in tonight, say something that you may, may not have heard previously and yes. you wondering where did that come from so we want to give you a quick Amen. review to bring you Amen. up to speed on december the first the first lesson we talked from the secrets to christian living somebody yes, saying i didn't know it was no secret to christian <laughs> living that's why you didn't know it's a secret it's a <laughs> glory secret. to god it's a secret yeah you know like the psalms 91 let me help somebody he that dwelleth in the, the secret, secret place. place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yes, didn't know it was a secret high. place of God? Yeah, that's where God wants us to dwell, dwell. In the secret place. Yes, sir. Why is it a secret place, Pastor? So that your problems, your issues, your circumstances can't go there. Come on, somebody. Mm. Come on. That's why we recite Psalms 91 every Sunday when we're in service. Psalms yes. 91. Yeah, it's a prayer of protection. protection. But it's also a prayer that aligns us with... 
The Secret Place. Yes, sir. So the series that we're teaching you from now is The Secrets to Christian Living. Yeah, I know you didn't know it was a secret, just like you didn't know it was a secret place in God. And that's what we got to get to so these things that's in the world don't affect us like the world. And we went to John, the 15th chapter, if you remember. If you go there with us tonight, John, the 15th chapter, let me get there. It simply says, and I'm reading verses 1 and 2 because that's what we did in the first series. It said, I am the true vine. <laughs> Let's go on and stop right there. You could preach that. I am the true vine. He's letting us know who he is. And my father, God, is the husband man or the caretaker, if you will. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he, not me, he taketh away. Uh -huh. And every branch that beareth fruit, mm -hmm. he purges it or prunes it, yes, if you will. Yes. That it may do what? Bring, Bring forth more fruit. fruit. Mm -hmm. My God, my God. So we dealt with that in the first uh, session. And what was it simply about? Abiding in him. in him. That's the secret to Christian living. Yes. The, the truest sign of Christian living is that we bear fruit. But the only way that we can bear fruit, we got to abide in the vine. Got oh, you. come on, got come you. on. He told us. So we got to stay connected, bear fruit, yes. and we got to live a fruitful life. Uh -huh. oh, this is good. We also dealt with in that same lesson, the pruning process. Mm -hmm. Pruning is not comfortable. <laughs> Come on My now. God. Come on, let's don't get real. When Come he starts to cut things off of you or away from mm -hmm. you, and some of us feel like he's taking something from us. Mm -hmm. But what he's really doing, he's opening you up so that you can produce more fruit. Uh -huh. Oh man, this is good. Oh, this is good. And what does mm -hmm. he do? The pruning process does what? It see when we allow God to prune us, what he does, Lady Whitley, he protects us. Yes. God, Oh, yes. Man. When he cuts some, you know, I got a plant that I try, I try to take care of. I don't have a green thumb. But whenever I see some of them <laughs> brown leaves come in, I cut them off. <laughs> Why do you cut them off? I cut them off so the green can survive. Yes. Mm, because if you let too much of the brown grow, what it's going to do, it's going to overtake the green. And then you're just going to have a brown dead plant. Well, such as it is with Christ. When he takes us through the pruning process, it's because he see some dead. Oh, Come on, God. help us, sir. He sees some dead stuff coming on us. He sees some stuff that's not like him. And what he wants to do, Lady Willie, what he wants to do with us, he wants to prune us. Come on, He said, you can't produce fruit with that brown yeah. stuff. Come on, sir. So what he does, he cuts away from us what is not unlike like him. him. Yes. Yeah. And cutting away the dead or overgrown branches or stems, especially to do what? To increase, increase our fruitfulness yes. mm -hmm. and to what produce growth, growth. oh my god uh -huh. yeah yeah you can't you cannot go unless you know and you can't know unless you are growing mm -hmm. and you can't grow unless we allow god mm -hmm. to prune us <laughs> yeah yeah you won't do it yourself god's got to do it this is good now the second lesson we went in was the secrets of christian living part two we did that on December the 13th. Mm -hmm. And what was that? That was just the extension, extension of one. Because we went from John the 15, chapter 1 and 2 to John 15, 3 and 4. Uh -huh. Which says, now you are clean. Come on, sir. Clean how? He said, through the word, Come which on, I man. have spoken to you. My God, the word will clean you up. He said, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide where? In the vine. He said, no, no more can you except you abide in me. Yes. He broke it down for us. Yes. John the 15th chapter, verses 3 and 4. Yes. When we abide in God and his word, guess what happens? We get clean. Thank you, Jesus. We get clean. Thank you, you God. You, you want to get clean? Take a bath in the word. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you know what he cleanses us from? He cleanses us from our sins. We know that. We, we're cleansed from our sins through the word. But he also cleanses us from our past. Thank you, Come Jesus. Come on, somebody. He cleanses us from our past because that's mm -hmm. the only thing that mm -hmm. the enemy mm -hmm. can use against you is your past. He don't know your he don't know your future, so he uses where you're at and where you've been against you. But God, through His Word, He cleanses us from our sins, from our past, and anything in our current life that would attempt to try to corrupt. Our cleanliness. Mm -hmm. Good God Almighty. Mm -hmm. He read right there, John 15, 3. He said, now you are clean. Oh my God. How did I get clean? He said, because you accepted the word which I spoke to you. And once God cleans us, we also learned in that lesson that apart from him, once we're clean, we can't do nothing. 
Mm -hmm. He didn't cleanse us through the word. And what happens a lot of times, once God cleanses us, Lady Willie, mm -hmm. we go now and try to, we try to be independent agents. Come we try to now. be free agents now. My God. God cleanses us through the word. Now, I'm going to do the rest on mm -hmm. my own. He mm -hmm. said, apart from me, you can do can nothing. Can do absolutely nothing. Yeah. Good God That's Almighty. the word of God. Ah. He said, and apart, apart from me, you cannot produce fruit. Yes. And anything you do apart from God, even though it may look productive, is bad living. fruit. And it's independent. It's corrupt fruit. Yes. It's tainted fruit. Yes. It's rotten fruit, yes. if you will. Yes. And it's through our connection that our fruit is protected. That's right. Now, that's what we learned in the first two lessons of the secrets to Christian living. Yes. And then what did it bring us to? It brought us to the pragmatics of Christian living. Uh -huh. And that's what we're at tonight. Amen. Amen. And Amen. we're going to Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 1 through 12. And Lady Whitley's going to read those verses to us and enlighten us. Amen. Amen. You got your Bibles? This is Bible study. Now, many of you will probably have the King James Version and some other versions. But tonight, I'm going to read to you from the Passion Translation. Oh, that's a good one. Amen. That's so, if you would just bear with me, it may sound a little different, but in all essence, it's the same word. Amen. Proverbs, the third Proverbs chapter. Proverbs, third chapter, verses 1 through 12 um, are our scriptures for tonight. And the Word of God reads, it says, My child, yeah. if you truly want a long and satisfying life, Come on. Never forget the things that I have taught you. Mm. Follow closely every truth that I've given you. Then you will have a full rewarding life. My God. Hold on to loyal love. Say it. And don't let go. Mm. And be faithful to all that you've been taught. My God. Let your life be shaped by integrity. Yeah. With truth written upon mm. your heart. That's how you will find favor and understanding Come on. with both God and men. You will gain the reputation of living life well. Mm. Verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord completely yeah. and do not rely on your own opinion. Yeah. Come with on. all your heart, rely on him to guide you. Do it. And he will lead you in every decision you make. Do it. Become intimate with him mm. in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you go. Like don't let, don't think for a moment that you know it all. Woo. For wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion yes. and avoid everything that's wrong. Then you will find the healing refreshment your body and spirit long for. Mm. Glorify God with all your wealth. My God. Honoring him with your very best. Give it to With him. every increase that comes to you. Ooh. Verse 10, it says, Then every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of inner joy. Wow. My child, when the Lord God speaks to you, Never take his words lightly mm -mm. and never be upset when he corrects you. Yes, it. For the father's discipline comes only from his passionate love and pleasure for you. Ooh. Even when it seems like his correction is harsh, mm -hmm. it is better than any father on earth gives to his child. Wow. And the word of God is blessed. Amen. Amen. Well, I love that passing translation. Yes. It's like, you know, I love Amplified because yes. I love it turned up. I love it loud. And I love passion. So that you can receive <laughs> what God is talking about. Yes. Man, that's good right yes. there. Yes. My God. And we're talking tonight about the pragmatics of Christian living. Mm -hmm. why, is pra why is practical living for the Christian important? The reason why practical living for the Christian is important is because he said, I put you in this world, yes. but you're not of this world. Thank you, Lord. And many times the Christian is trying to live something that they're not. He said, I put you here. Mm -hmm. So a Christian has to have balance. Yes. They have to be able to live in the world yes. knowing that they're not of the world. Yes, sir. But what they have to do because they have balance, they, they can't be too heavenly bound that they're no earthly, earthly good. good. They cannot be too earthly bound that they cannot get to heaven. My God. Second Peter 1 and 3 says, I've given you everything yes, that pertains to life 
and godliness. And godliness. Come on. He's giving it to us. So what is he saying to us? Mm-hmm. He wants the Christian to live a balanced life. Amen. He wants the Christian to live a practical life. <laughs> Sometimes the Christian trying to live an impractical life. Mm. We're trying to do something that we can't do. When God says, just do what you can do and what you can't do, allow me to. Yes, sir. So that's why... Uh, Practical living is important for the Christian. Why are you talking about the Christian? Ain't practical living good for everybody? Practical living for everybody is good, but the people that are not Christians got to first go to first base, and first base is coming into alignment with God. Yes, sir. And that means I got to get saved first. Come on, sir. <laughs> Before I can fall into the pragmatics of the Christian life, Come on, sir. I got to become a Christian. Thank <laughs> you, Jesus. So ain't no Lisa saying the pragmatics to life. No, we're saying the pragmatics to Christian life. Because the first place I got to become is a Christian. Yes. I got to align myself with him. And then I can live the life in which he wants me to live. Praise God. You know, as Pastor was saying, when we talk about pragmatics, because it seems like a large word, but it is is simply practical, what's realistic, Mm. um, what's matter of fact. Come on. You know, when when we read the word of God, the the word of God is a realistic word that it's a standard of living by which God has given each and every one of us to live by. And so he hasn't made it so daunting and such a task that we can't Mm. do it. We make we it can. hard. We just have to, get, um, as they say, the wheel in the middle of the wheel. We have to yield our will to God. That's it. So we have to be able to do um, what God gives us to do. And the only way we're able to do it is if we um, we take this word of God and we apply it mm. um, to our lives. Um, you know, pragmatic living, praise God, Christian living is based on the fear of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we read the word of God, um, the first thing it tells us um, is that we are to fear um, the Lord. Praise mm-hmm. God. The beginning and of the wisdom. The beginning of wisdom. Mm-hmm. It says the, the fear of the Lord. And this is in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. It mm-hmm. says in the, beginning. the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so it's letting us know that we have to seek the wise counsel of this word of God. Wow. And when we fear the Lord, you know, we hear this word fear and we get, you know, like it's a scary thing. Like God, God doesn't want us to be afraid of Come him. On. That's right. God wants us to be in love with him. Mm. And he wants us to be in a love Ooh, relationship with him. And so in order to have this love relationship with God, we have to have reverence for God. I see. We have to have reverence for God and we have to have reliance on God. That's Too true. many times we are focused on what we can do in our abilities. And God has given us several abilities. He's given us several abilities, but it has to we have to remain connected to him in order to actually bring those things to fruition. Mm. We can't do them in and of ourselves, praise God. You know, I'm looking at the time that we're in, Pastor Whitley, and I truly believe that this is a time, you know, having gone through 2020 and everything that we've experienced, mm-hmm. God has allowed us to see that we can still go onward and forward in him, praise God. But I also know this that this is a time of spiritual renewal. Mm. Many people are reconnecting to God. Yeah. Praise God. And even during this time of study, you know, we are reconnecting with God, you know, from the toils of the day. You know, we've been infused by everything else that's been going on in our lives. Now we have this opportunity to reconnect to him. And some of us need to reconnect to him spiritually. So I believe that this is a time of spiritual renewal. And it's not led by men and women of God, but it's led by God himself. When you look at all that God has allowed through 2020 and even probably years prior, because we've all experienced life. You know, we're all doing life. We shouldn't Mm. allow life to do us, but we all experience life. And we realize that with everything that's gone on, Even with the deficiencies that many of us may have experienced in 2020, whether it's financially, whether it's in our health, you know, many of us have gone through the mental challenges and the toils of just dealing with this whole COVID-19 situation, the many hardships um, that may have brought about for many people where where there may have been um, genuine lack, but God still has remained, um, to, he still remains our source, praise God. So I truly believe that this is a time of spiritual renewal, and I do believe that this, is, this time of spiritual renewal is led by God himself. Yes. And so what we have to do during this time, Pastor, my belief is that we have to do as God always um, 
asks us to do in accordance to his word is we have to evaluate our conduct. Mm. We've got to evaluate our own selves. Um, this is the season for us to continue to look inward so that we can project outwardly the things and the personhood of God and the characters of the characteristic of Jesus Christ. And that's godly character. Wow. Praise God in our life. Yeah, in my notes, that's good. Oh, Pastor, that's I'm sorry. This, right that lets us know mm -hmm. that God that's is, good. the word of God is, yeah. is, is um, resonating and being revealed both to us in the same place. Because mm -hmm. you know what I had in my notes was when the father looks at us, he wants to see the son. Yes. Yes. And we have to ask ourselves, because you said do a personal reflection. A personal we have to ask ourselves, does my life reflect the sun yes. or does my life reflect me? Yes. Because yes. God don't want to look at us because, yes. uh, because we, we, for lack of a better word, are filthy rags. Yes, sir. Because the sin in which we were born in mm -hmm. and the sin in which these corrupt bodies hold. That's the reason why when you die, your body goes back to the earth, but your Get your spirit goes Those back to the Father. Yeah. And you said do a, a personal reflection. Mm -hmm. And one of the things to do a personal reflection, you have to be taught. Mm -hmm. You have to be taught. That's why we have Bible study even tonight, praise God, because th these verses of Scripture right here in the third chapter of mm -hmm. Proverbs mm -hmm. uh, 1 through 12 is a teaching. Yes, it is, sir. This is a teaching so that when I do the retrospect of looking within myself. Yes. Where do I get it from? I get it from a t something that has been taught to me. Right. So I've learned it down the road so that I can do that reflection. Mm -hmm. And what, what am I sizing myself up? Not against my brother, That's not against my, my sister, this not, a, not against mind. somebody else. I'm not looking over in the Joneses yard. Yes. I'm sizing myself up against the word. The word of God. The word. Do, the my, do I align with that? This is the plumb line. Yes, that's it. This is the plumb line. That's powerful. Yeah, that connected Amen. right to what, what I had because when you start to look at these scriptures, mm -hmm. one of the things I looked at, and you like to, you like to uh, give the meaning of words, but <laughs> and you did with practical because practical yes. is just feasible. Yes. What's effective? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we... To accomplish our goals in life, sometimes we're doing what's ineffective and, mm -hmm. and trying and our hardest. Feasible. And we're not even accomplishing it. And we are wondering why when we mm -hmm. could just take the easy road and do what's practical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many people, and I'm going to use this for an example, many people are struggling with finances. God help. But it's because they didn't do the practical thing. Mm -hmm. We teach the five things of finances, the reason mm -hmm. why I'm using it. Mm -hmm. Give, to, Give God. to God. Give to Give God. Pay, pay yourself. yourself. Mm-hmm. Then you have to pay, save pay your, your money, money, pay, pay your, your bills, bills and, and live, live within, within your means. means. I'm going to say that again. The give five things to God. finance. Give to God. Pay, pay yourself. yourself. Save, save your, your money. money. Pay, pay your, your bills. bills. Give to God. And then, of course, live within your means. Thank you. You got it. You got it. We don't say We say it every Sunday. Yeah. I try to say it at church. but <laughs> that, the, That's practical. Yes. The, that five things to finance, that's practical. But many people deal with struggle with finances. Why? Because we're doing what's not practical. Mm -hmm. We're doing impractical things. We don't even yeah, have not. the ability to even discipline ourselves in the area of finances. Uh -huh. So therefore, we're living impractical. And God said, why are you struggling when I never meant for it to be like That's that it. for you? If you would bring yourself under subjection, start to live practical. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Then what you want and what you need, you shall have. Uh -huh. Now, now my life started to line up with this. With the word. And all uh -huh. I did was do what was practical. That's right. Oh, this is good. This is good. Yeah, uh, we teaching better than y'all shouting right now. Yeah, <laughs> this is good. And if we would just do what's practical, you know, the Bible says love. I, I wrote down the word love. If we would just love like the Bible say love. It's some isms, some schisms, some jealousy, some problems, issues and circumstances. We would not have. That's right. But we, we say we love, but we don't love like, like the word like of God this. says. We don't love like this. And if mm -hmm. we did, just practical, we wouldn't deal with some of the things in which we deal with. That's right. Just practical living. That's what he wants mm -hmm. us to do. Just live practical. 
Well, we have to take the biblical truths of the word of God, Pastor Willie, and then apply them to our life's yes. realities. Now, hear what I'm saying. Apply them to our life's realities. Come on. Because sometimes we're applying the word of God or trying to apply the word of God to some things that are unrealistic. Come on. Ooh, so that's we have good. to take the biblical truth of mm, the word of God. That's good. And apply it to life's realities and then live by those standards. Wow. See, this is the standard line of God. You know, and if and, if, and this is the baseline standard, mm. because as as God can, as we get, as we start to walk in this thing, we start to live it out. But what God does, He builds upon it, line upon line, precept upon Come on, precept. That's it. That's he it. gives us revelation knowledge upon revelation knowledge. So this is what God. So this is a part of the growth process. Yes. But we've got to start at the baseline. Come on. And the baseline is simply taking the biblical word. Uh, the biblical truth of the word of God, applying it to life's reality mm. and then living by God's standards. Then this allows you and I to become wise, Come you on. know, as the word of God Come says. On. That's it. Even when you read these instructions right here, we're in Proverbs, the third chapter, verses one through 12. Mm -hmm. When you're reading them, yes. and I love that you read them out of the, uh, the, the Passion, Passion Bible. Translation. Uh, but when you read them, no matter what translations mm -hmm. you read them in, when you read these instructions, they're just practical instructions. Practical instructions. You know, I love the, um, the uh, serenity prayer. Mm -hmm. It says, God, oh, give me the uh, courage to deal with the things that I can and then give me, give me the wisdom to, to accept the, the things thing that, that I, I can't. Cannot. This is practical. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's just that's practical. It. Now, I know, you know, say, oh, the serenity prayer. Yeah, it may not be outlined as such in the Bible, but you just said it. You got to take the realities, realities. of life. Yes. You got to take the realities of life. And I love that because for the simple fact of I got to I got to take the reality of where I am mm -hmm. and who I am and let this Bible deal with me where I'm at. That's it. Too many times we try to take the pra pragmatics of, of Christian living and apply them to another Christian or apply them to somebody else's life. We're good many times at giving somebody else instructions, so we but we don't even advice. take our own advice. Amen. I want to read something to you uh, from Romans, the 12th chapter. Mm -hmm. And it, it's verse, ver the first verse. It says, I beseech you, brother. Come on, Pastor. Paul is talking. Yes, By the is. mercies of God, of God, that you present you your, bodies your bodies a living mm -hmm. sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy and acceptable unto God. God. And then he adds, which is reasonable your reasonable service. service. Uh -huh. My God. What's reasonable? What's effective? What's feasible, what you're what's effective, what's, what's practical. practical. Come on. He said, that's just your reasonable that's service. It. It's right. only practical, practical that we would do this. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God has already done so much for us. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. only, it's only practical when somebody do something nice for you. You say, thank you. Thank you. Hey, that's just the practical. That's reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> that's reasonable. They just blessed you. So you would do that. But when we start to look at these scriptures, I outlined them here in, uh, the third chapter of Proverbs, mm -hmm. you see three things in these scriptures. You see wisdom, mm -hmm. reward, uh -huh. and failure. Mm -hmm. you see, it's right here. It's outlined. You see wisdom, reward, and failure. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, look at it. The, the, first, the first verses, one through eight, you see wisdom. It's right there outlined for you. Say, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace... They will add to you. I'm talking about, don't that sound like some mama would tell you? Mm -hmm. Don't that sound like some daddy would instruct a child? He said, not, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Mm -hmm. He said, bind them around your, around neck. your neck. Write them on tablets of your heart. And so shall you find high esteem in the sight of God. My God. Woo! Uh, you can man. stop right there. But he said, and man. And man. I'm going to give you favor not only with God, but with man. So you see the wisdom in these first eight verses uh, mm -hmm. of, of this of this father talking to this son or this mother talking to this mm -hmm. son. In the first eight verses, what do I see? I see wisdom. But we're talking about 12 verses. And if you would go to 9 and 10, you see reward. Because mm -hmm. verse 9 says, honor the Lord with all your possessions. And with the first fruit of all your increase, your substance, mm -hmm. everything you have. Why would I honor God with it? Because he, yes, he gave it to it me. To me. <laughs> God. So why wouldn't you honor who gave it to you? Mm -hmm. You see it in verse 10 says, now here's the reward. 
so that your barns, my God, so that your bank account, Mm -hmm. come on, so that your children, come on, so that your health, Mm -hmm. that your wealth, he said, should be filled with plenty and the vat should overflow with new wine. (laughs) No, no, that ain't the wine he's talking about. He's talking about with goodness. Yes. So that you will have them things. So we see right there, we see the wisdom, we see the reward. And then when you get to verses 11 and 12, you see the failure. Mm-hmm. Come on, somebody. Come on, I'm mm-hmm. talking to you now. Verse 11 and 12, he says, son, do not despise chastisement. See, because when we go the opposite way that God tells us to go, and we start to go through what we call here at CHOP, unnecessary, unnecessary roughness, roughness, God does just like any parent should do. Yes. As a matter of fact, David say, if it wasn't until I was afflicted, afflicted. that mm-hmm. I learned. Mm-hmm. I learned through the afflictions yes. of God to draw to closer, closer to, to God. God. So you see failure. He said, do not spies chastisement nor correction. Mm -hmm. Telling you. He said, for them, for them that the Lord loves, he corrects. Mm -hmm. Just as a father would a son. In whom he delight. When you love your children, you correct them. When you you don't love them, you just let them do anything. (laughs) And how that working out for you. So right there, you see the, you see the wisdom. You see the reward. And you see what failure can do. Yes. And I noticed something when I looked at these scriptures. Eight verses dealt with wisdom. Yes, sir. But when you got to uh, 9 through 12, you saw reward and failure. That's right. And I wondered, why would he use eight to deal with wisdom and so few to deal with reward and failure? Well, you know, Pastor, one of the things is that when you apply the word of God, as you're saying, the reason he gave us that many is because he wants us to be able to apply the word of God. So he's given us much word Mm -hmm. to apply. And if we were to apply them, then we would see less failure. Oh, that's good. That's good. Less failure. You know, but when we fail to apply the word of God, then or or, or, or the principles in his word, then we're not able to make practical decisions. Mm. So God wants us to be able to apply his principles in order that you and I can make the practical decisions for our lives that we need to make. And then when we do this, um, you know, we we're able to live the live life the way that God. God wow. desires and has meant it for you and I to live it. I mean, you know, life are full of choices. Let's mm. be real. Life is full of choices. Yes. And we've all we've all made good choices. We've all made bad choices. Um, we've all made wise choices. We've all made foolish choices. And and God knows, you know, um, what we're going to do even before we do it. But God wants you and I to apply wisdom to every area and every scenario of our life so that yes. we'll be able to experience um, the benefits of kingdom living here and now. Wow. You know, God says, you know, we're waiting for um, the blessings of the Lord to be manifested later on. But God wants us to enjoy the blessings of the kingdom right here and right now. That's powerful. And so he gives us the wisdom mm-hmm. that we need to follow. But a lot of times we don't hearken to those instructions. Mm. And because of that, you know, and then he gives the, 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 the um, compare and contrast of the reward versus the failure. Mm-hmm. So if you don't apply the uh, the wisdom that I've given you, you know, if you do apply, you you reap the rewards. If you don't, you're going to reap failure. Mm. I think he spent a lot of time dealing with reward, too, to show us that. I mean, to deal with wisdom, to show us that it's more important to get wisdom than it is than reward, to get the reward. Than it is to focus on your failures yes. in life. Yes. It's, it, you know, the that Bible, too, if you yes, really sir. read into yes, it, sir. it says wisdom when you pursue it. Uh, you went back to the first chapter Mm -hmm. of proverbs Mm -hmm. let me go to the second chapter of proverbs where it says starting with the first verse the value of wisdom Mm -hmm. my god Mm -hmm. glory to god he says here my son if you receive my words Mm -hmm. and treasure my commandments he says so that you incline your Your ears ears. to wisdom and apply your heart to understand my god he's talking to us he said, you cry out for discernment and you lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her, 
wisdom. He called her. He put wisdom. Yes. He called wisdom by her. Yes. He said, if you seek her as silver, mm-hmm. oh my God, talking about the value of it. Mm-hmm. He gave us eight verses in, in the third chapter uh, talking about wisdom because they're more important than reward. Mm-hmm. They're more important than silver. They're more important than gold. If you get wisdom, don't you know you, you profit? Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is good. He said, but when you search for her, wisdom, yes. As a hidden treasure, then you will understand. understand. Good God. Woo! Man, some people talk about if I knew then, if I knew back then what I know now. Because you know what? They have lived a life and through life mm-hmm. we get experience. Or we also get wisdom. We yes. should anyway. Yes. And what people look at, they say, man, if I knew, if I knew back when I was 20... What I know now, yes, if I had that wisdom, then, what then, I know now. wow, mm-hmm. what, it would be more valuable. Mm-hmm. I would be able to do more. Mm-hmm. Well, because what happens is that we would have been able to stave off a bunch of folly. Woo. Because folly leads to death. Mm-hmm. The word of God lets us know that. You said that in, in yes. the first chapter. He said, fools despise. Uh-huh. <laughs> he said right there, yes. fools despise it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cause it, but his wisdom, it leads, his wisdom leads to life. His wisdom leads to prosperity. Wow. And his wisdom leads to security. My God. So we have to make sure that we get Ooh, wisdom. The wisdom of the God. The wisdom of God. One, uh, the other thing, too, is that we have to apply it. Because as we go into the next portion of the scriptures, verses 5 through 6, it tells us to trust in the Lord with all thine heart mm-hmm. and lean not into thine own understanding. Mm-hmm. In all thy ways acknowledge, acknowledge him, him. And he shall direct um, your path. So... We have to be able to trust in God and his word and allow his word to speak to mm-hmm. us personally. You know, another thing I saw there, too, a lot of people quote that scripture, trust him, lead mm-hmm, not to your mm-hmm, own understanding. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What happens when I trust him, because what the Bible is telling me, I got an understanding, too. Yes. And oh, my yeah. understanding, may not be fruitful. come on, and my understanding may not be the same as God's, but what I have to do with my understanding, I got to put my understanding aside. Yes, sir. The way I think something should be, the way that the way that the way that it always been, the way that I see it, I have to put that thing aside and let the wisdom and the understanding of God lead me uh-huh. so that I won't make a mistake. So I won't go wrong. And even if I do, and I'm following what he aligned, it goes back to Romans 8 and 28. For we know, know. even though I went the wrong way, even though I made a mistake, but I was trying to follow his word and his wisdom, all things work Work together come on for the good of them that love god and are called according to his purpose come on he said but are 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 we called Mm, are you the called so and he is he is calling though he is calling amen but we do we have to trust in god's trust in god and we have to trust in his word we have to allow his word to speak to us we're talking about the pragmatics of christian living and then be willing to obey. Wow. That, that's the key right there. First no one ain't enough. Spiritual maturity yes, is what? I got to be able to, to hear, from, hear God, from God. To yeah. step out by faith and then what? Do what he says. I got to apply. No one ain't enough. That's I told it. you that on Sunday. That's yeah. it. We know a whole lot of things. Yeah. But how many of those things that we know do, do we, we apply? Do, do we <laughs> yeah. do? Yeah, I know it. I told you, when you started that job, I don't care if you've been on it 10 years, 15 years, 100 years. When you first started, they gave you something called... An employee's manual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I was in the army, they gave a bunch of them out to us. They were called regulations. Hello, mm-hmm. somebody. But they gave you something on that. Some people didn't even read it. You know, I started a job. They gave it to me in orientation. You take it home sometime, put it on the shelf. You, some people don't even know where it's at no more. But they gave you that. And that book really was the pragmatics of doing that job. Well, because it helps you to navigate through the day-to-day operation of the word. And it's the Come same on. way with our lives. Praise God. You know, um... Many of us, we say that we trust God, but in our lives, you know, a lot of times we just, we really demonstrate a lack of trust in God. Because we lean to our own understanding. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it the way that I understand I want to it do should it. be. Mm-hmm. And it ain't so much the way that I, well, yeah, it is the way yeah, I, want I want to, to do, do it, it, but it's also the way that I understand it to be done. Mm-hmm. Many people doing the things the way that they see mom and daddy do it versus the way God say do it. That's right. And that's the reason why the Bible said you don't get off the hook. Well, my mom and dad never taught me nothing, so I had to go for what I know. He said, no, no longer shall the children's teeth be set on edge because the sins of the father right. and what your mother or your father you didn't do. Don't you don't get an excuse. <laughs> yeah, you I don't, don't get out excuse. on that. I can't use that as an excuse. Now, we're talking about the pragmatic of the Christian living. You know, one of the things, too, Angie, uh, lady, with, people oh, think oh, that uh, Christian living pragmatically is going to church. Well, let me go back. I'm going to step back one. 
is in the dress. How somebody looks. You know, because we, we channel things like that. <laughs> how somebody looks, that's a, that's a this. That's a that, you know. You see the man with the pants hanging down. You already made a determination about him. But what you don't, what you didn't see was what's in here. And in his come heart. On, come on, somebody. Come on. Let's get real. But a lot of Christians were taught that because I go to church is a part of my practical Christian living. Even though the Bible does say, forsake not this Hebrews 10, yeah, 25, assembly the assembly of yourselves like together. Believers. Now, that the word does say that. But let's go on and get real quick. And real, real, real smart here. What we got to understand, even about pragmatically living, even though I go to church, even though I look a certain way, don't mean I'm that way. That's right. Because how many of you are, you know, how many people may look the part, but how many of them are really acting upon God's direction? Come on, come on. Daily in according to his word. Because we lives. only can see. On you are, you only going to be able to see what I let you see. That's right. <laughs> Come on, let's get real. But you know, I wanted to go there because rules without relationship lead to rebellion. And just because I go to church don't make me be a Christian. Mm -hmm. no, no more than you standing in a garage make you be a car. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Go on, let's get real. But rules without relationship, they lead to rebellion. And what God does not want us to do is to obey, to do what he say based off of a bunch of rules. He wants us to follow him based mm -hmm. off of our love for him. Yes. It's a difference now. It's yes. a difference. He wants us to obey him. I go to church. Some people go to church to mark the, to, to get a mark. Uh, go ahead and mark me down present. You saw me. I'm here. Mm -hmm. But I don't plan on, and see the devil loved that because he know you don't plan on doing nothing God say. You don't plan on aligning yourself with that word. You just going to say, I did what, mm -hmm. what I'm supposed to do. But if I love him, I'm going because I want to honor him. Yes, sir. I want to glorify him. Mm -hmm. I want to worship yes, him. Yes, sir. I want to give him praise. That, yes. So Jesus said in John, the 14th chapter, the 15th verse, he says, if you love me. Good God. I'm like, mm. yeah. He said, if you love me, keep my keep commandments. Keep my commandments. He said, now, come on. He said, I don't want you to do it because somebody, the pastor said you ought to do it because, because the church tells you, because mama told you to do it, because you read Proverbs 3, 1 through 12, and the scripture said do it. He said, if you love me, come on, sir. if you love me, mm -hmm. keep my commandments. Yes. Do it because you love me. And Peter messed up because Peter didn't understand this. You remember when he came to Peter, he said, Peter, does thou love me? And Peter said, yeah, yeah Lord, you know I love you. Know I he asked him again. He said, Peter, do you love me? Mm -hmm. Peter said, now, come on now, Lord. You know I love you. Now, Peter was getting a little upset, and the Lord asked him a third time, mm -hmm. Peter, do you love me? Yes, he my did. God, my God. Yes, he did. Why did he ask him three times? I said one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yes. But he asked him three times because anytime you say something more than once, you're putting emphasis on it. Mm -hmm. He asked him three times if you love me, and on the third time he said, if you really love me, Feed my sheep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was he saying? He wanted to live, get understanding. Live understanding. the way right. that mm -hmm. I've taught you to live. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? So that others will look at you and see the sun. Mm -hmm. Good God Almighty. Woo! <laughs> so that they can look at you and see me. Because if you really love the way that he's talking about loving here in John the 14th chapter, we love like that right there. Come on, sir. We're, we're not doing it to get a mark, uh, absent, uh, present by my name, or, or you see me, God, I'm doing it, you know. No, I'm doing it because I love you. Glory to and God. And God shows mercy upon those who love him and who keep yes. his commandments. The word of God lets us know that. So, yes. um, you know, it's very important that um, in as we apply this uh, or go through this effective Christian living, mm. so to speak, yes. that we experience what God does with our obedience. Wow. See, because God does something with your obedience. Yes, he does. That's why we say that, you know, we need to first be able to hear from God, step out by faith, and then do what he says do. Yeah. Because God does something with your obedience. God blesses your obedience. God honors Ooh. your obedience. Um, that's where we get the fruitfulness um, and we multiply from because of our obedience. That's the reason why he clicked in too in Malachi and said that I don't want you to give begrudgingly. That's it. You're, giving, you're doing it because of some rules, some outlines, some, yes, something that somebody told you to do. It but if you, you do it if because you love me, that's it. then it comes into what you it, then I can bless you. I can bless it. I can bless mm -hmm. it because you didn't do it because because of obligation. That's it. 
because the Bible says it like this in the King James, out of necessity, you did it because you love me. And because you love me, you did it. Now I'm going to do what I do because I love you. <laughs> Good God of mine. <laughs> Let's go on um, James 15, chapter four, verse, um, chapter 15, verses four through five. I James? just want to go through there. I mean, excuse me, John 15. Okay. Yeah, John. John 15, mm-hmm. verse four through five. Now this is what... Um, of course, I'm going to be reading the, um, I'm going to read the King James Version, but I'm going to also read the Passion Translation as well. The John 15, 4 through 5, it says, Abide in me and I in you, yes. as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine. Mm-hmm. No more can ye unless ye abide in me. That was lesson two. He Come says, on. I am mm-hmm. the vine and ye are the branches. Who and are he you? that abideth in me, I in him, Ooh. the same bringeth forth much, much fruit. fruit. I God. want you to underline that, much fruit. Fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Mm. Now the Passion Translation of this same scriptural passage says, So you must remain in life union Come on. with Woo. me. For I remain in life union Covenant connection. with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, mm. so your life will be fruitless Come on. unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. Woo. Verse 5 says, I am the sprouting vine. Come on, come on. Everything coming out of that. And you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source. My God. Fruitfulness will stream from within you. Yes. But when you live separated from me. Come on. You are powerless. Come on. This is from the the, the, uh, Passion Translation. that's good. So much fruit Um, which is the fruitfulness which will stream from within you and I equals 100 fold. Mm -hmm. Which is the secret secret to Christian living. living Because God wants us to have 100 fold in everything that we do. God wants us to, he wants to maximize us to maximize our potential. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he doesn't want us to just be living the bare minimum. Even when we read that scripture, 30, 60, 100 100 fold. fold. Many people don't understand because their focus is on 100 fold, but But they ain't, they don't real they don't realize that it's through stages. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's through stages it. and phases. That's he it. takes us through stages yes. and phases. You ain't it's gonna receive a hundred fold when you're not doing a hundred fold work. Come on, sir. <laughs> they ain't just paying you a hundred fold and you only doing fifty fold work. That's right. <laughs> Come on, Rich. That's God. right. Oh, that's good, lady. I'm with you now. I'm with you now. We have to go back to John when you teaching the, the secrets, secrets of Christian, Christian living. That's it. Even though we're talking about the pragmatics tonight, the secret to Christian living, the secret. Is I have to stay connected. Yeah, because... And I love the passion. It's a union. union. That's it. Union. A marriage. Yes. A connection. Come on. Yes. Because without God, you know, in our lives, then, of course, we're not going to be profitable. Mm. We're not going to live a prosperous life. But we have to, as we say, we have to remain connected, praise God, to the source. And Jesus Christ Mm -hmm. is the source. And he is the one that enables you and I to yield the fruit in in our lives. So... Um, you know, when we live an independent life um, from Christ, you know, as we call it, we call it independent living. When we go into independent living, then we're living beneath our privilege. Wow. And God doesn't want us to live beneath our privilege. So what I mean by living beneath our privilege, it means living without the power of God to mm. produce his fruit, not Come your on. fruit, not Ooh. my fruit, but to produce his fruit in our lives. Somebody thought that that aligning themselves with God and being blessed by God is a car, a shoe, a no, house. No. Those are byproducts, byproducts. Of, of you living right. And for just because somebody got a car, a shoe, and a house, if they're struggling because the blessings of God don't come with, with sorrow. That's it. And see, sorrow is what you can't see when you're looking over in the Joneses yard. Mm-hmm. You can't mm-hmm. see the sorrow. All you see is the green grass. Mm-hmm. And when you align your life with Christ, you just hit it right on the head. The power, the power of, God. of God. Because one of the secrets to, to Christian living is I can tell if you're aligned with God. Why? It's right here in John 15. Mm-hmm. You will produce mm-hmm. fruit. fruit. Come on. It's evident. I see the fruit. <laughs> It's evident. Not a car, a shoe, or a house. I see the power of God. Come on, of God. Of God. Good God of mine. I see of the God. power of God in your life. That's right. Not a shoe, a car, a house. I don't see your bank account. I don't see those things. But I do see the mm-hmm. power of God in your mm-hmm. life. It mm-hmm. will be evident. 
That's the secret to Christian living. Mm-hmm. That's the secret. The secret to Christian living is fruit bearing. Yes, sir. I should be, be. I should be producing fruit. How do you produce fruit? I'm connected to the vine. Come on, sir. I'm connected. Not that I got a car. Not that I got a bank account. No, I got health, wealth, prosperity, and I got the power of God. <laughs> My God. He was teaching us one time, you know, about our son. Our son used to uh, had a uh, had a kidney. Uh, had to get a kidney uh, transplant, mm-hmm. and he was very sick. And Mother uh, Ferguson told me years ago, she said, Elder, your son gets sick and he at home, you ain't got to call nobody. nobody but God. That's it. Why? Because when you stay connected to God, when you stay connected to God, she wasn't negating my pastor or my leaders or anybody like that. What she was doing, she was promoting my God. Because when you stay connected to the vine, whatever problem, issue, or situation you have in your life, because you're connected, the power of God will be produced through your life. That's it. That's it. My God. Talking about practical Christian living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I go to church. Yes, I give. Yes, I do all those things that I'm supposed to do that will look outwardly. But but what I have to do that you can't see, I got to stay connected. Thank you, Jesus. I got to stay connected. Thank you, Lord. I got to stay connected. See, because those outwardly things will make you think I'm connected. But God said, I judge the heart. That's it. I don't judge what, what man, I don't look the way that man looks. I judge the heart. So what may look like you, oh, he in church, man, ain't he a good brother? Oh, ain't she a good sister? But her heart, the, the Bible says it like this. Jesus said, those people, they, they, stand with their mouth. They, they, they profess me with their mouth. He said, but their heart is far from me. Yes. My God. Meaning they look like they're producing fruit. Mm. He said, but they ain't connected to me. My God. Oh, my God. God. He my said, God. but they not connected to me. <laughs> well, one of the things, you know, just going back and I was just, you know, thinking about it because, you know, we've got to trust God. Ooh, yeah. Just going back to Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6, you know, the knowledge of God um, should make us willing to trust him. Mm-hmm. Just knowing who he is, knowing what he can do, yes. knowing what he says he will do should make us truly yes. trust God. And trust means when you read the word, um, as I was reading in, the, in, in, in my um, study time, means to lie down, you know, it's, it's, um, to be able to, uh, put your entire weight on something, Mm. you know, and when you like, for instance, when we lay down and when we go to sleep, that was one of the things I just put on the example. When we go and we lay down and we go to sleep on our bed, we believe that our bed is strong enough to hold us. Like we did these chairs when we came in here. You know, when we sit down in the chairs, you know, we believe that the chairs were strong enough to hold us. Well, when you trust God with, with your whole heart. Yes. Then you put your entire weight on Ooh, God. Come on. Somebody needs to know that you can trust God. Mm. You can put your entire weight oh, that's on good. God. And I promise you My that he God. is strong enough to hold you. He can bear your he's, burden. He's strong enough Ooh. to hold this entire world up. Come on. He's doing we're it. We're still here. Yes. 2020 has gone on, but we're still here. Yes. Come and on. And he's able to bear the weight mm. of even COVID-19. Come on. We're still here. Yes. Somebody needs to know that you need to trust God mm. with your whole heart. Yes. With all Put of Put all your, your weight heart, on it. Which means Ooh. entirely, without exception. Mm. God says, trust me completely mm, my he says i can sustain you mm. you you your own understanding praise god will not support you mm. this is what god Ooh. is saying lean not to your Oshabahase. lean not to your own yes. understanding but in all of your ways acknowledge Come me and i will direct your path yes. i will set Glory. your feet on high, I will set your yes. feet on a sure foundation. All right, I see. God is saying, trust him. Yeah, lean on it. Lean on me. Lean on it. Because God is omniscient. Mm. God is all knowing. God is all wise. That's and it, it That's is it. his wisdom is infinite. Yes. He knows more than what we know. Mm. He sees further down the road than you and I could ever see. Come on. He knows what's around every crook and every nanny. Yes. He knows what's around every corner. But you've got to 
stay on the righteous path of God. God. You've got to hold fast to this word of God. Yes. You've got to read this word of God. You've Come got on. to study to show yourself, not the pastor, not the evangelist, not the prophet, not the apostle, the not the teacher, not the preacher, but to study to show yourself approved, mm. a workman unto God that needed not to be ashamed, Come but on. to be able to rightly That's divide this it. word of truth for yourself. Get into this word of God. That's it. This is the time. This is the Come season. On. That's it. That glory. God right now, I'm here. Oh, God. Glory Thank to you. God. God right now, I'm telling you all, this is the time for us to, to press into him. Yes. Lean Fresh on wine. Him. Put your Lean weight on into him. him. Trust God. Hallelujah. If we ain't seen nothing, nothing else. else. All that we've seen in 2020 and all that some of us yes. have seen in the years before 2020. Yes. What God has taken us through, mm. our faith and our trust has to be founded in him. In him. It's only him that we, we, that we see another day. That's it. It's only him that we're yes. sustained. It's only him that we have been able to even make it yes. to this very hour. This is a season of renewal, people Man, you hear it, Lady Willie. That's what we got to do. We got to trust him. This is a season of renewal. Mm. And we got to, we have to seek him first. Yeah, lean not. Seek him first. Yes. Matthew, what is it? Matthew 6 and 33, it says that we are to um, seek him first. Mm -hmm. And all of his, his righteousness. righteousness. Seek his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And all of his righteousness. And then all of these other things shall be added unto you and I. We, we got, got to backwards. stop seeking the things. Mm -hmm. We got to get back to the basics. We seek the things and then when the things don't work, we start to seek mm -hmm. God. But he says, seek me first. That's it. And my kingdom. Mm -hmm. See, we got to seek him first. And part of seeking seek him goes back to what you said about trusting him. Because even when I cannot see, see him. I still got to trust him. I got him. to trust him. And I love it because we didn't come in here and before sitting down, test these chairs. No, we To did see not. if they would sustain no, us. we trusted. When we walked in here, we flopped down. We, we sit down in these chairs. And this is what God wants us yes. to do in life. He don't want you to try to see your way. Come on, sir. He wants you to trust your way. That's right. And when you trust him, he said, if you trust me... <laughs> My God. Come on. Because what James 1 and, 1 and 5 says, this is the, the, the word of God says, he says, and if anyone longs for wisdom, if you Come lack on. wisdom, you, yeah. he said, ask God ask for wisdom God. and he will give it to you. Yeah. He won't, he won't see your lack of wisdom mm. as an opportunity to scold you. Mm. He won't see your failures as an opportunity to scold you. Yes. Um, but what he's going to do is that he will give you his grace generously. Mm -hmm. This is what God wants to do. Yes. And so wisdom exalts God. Yes. Wisdom exalts God. Yes. And so what we have to do, Proverbs 16, verses 1 through 9, and I'm going to read this. This is in the Passion Translation. It says, go ahead Come on. and make all the plans that you want. Yeah. But it's the Lord who will ultimately direct your mm -hmm. steps. We are all in love with our own opinions. Convinced they're correct, mm. but the Lord is in the midst of us, testing and probing our every motive. Mm. It says, Before you do anything, put your trust totally in God and not in yourself. Say it. Then every plan you will make will every succeed. Plan. Yes. The Lord works everything together to accomplish his purpose. Come on. Even the wicked are works. Even even the wicked are included in his plans. My God. He sets them aside for the day of disaster. Woo. Exalting yourself, he says, is disgusting to the Lord. Mm. For pride attracts his punishment. Come on. And you can Woo. count on that. My God. You can avoid evil through surrender worship. Come on. And the fear of God. Yes. For the power of his faithful love removes sin's guilt Ooh, and grip Jesus. over you. When the Lord is pleased with the decisions you've made, he activates grace. Come on, come on. To turn enemies Producing into fruit. friends. Come on. Yeah. It is better to have little it is it, excuse me, it is better to have little with a heart that loves mm -hmm. justice than to be rich and not have God on your side. My God. Within your heart, you can make plans for your future, Ooh. but the Lord chooses the steps 
you take to get there. My That's God. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1 through 9. And I read that from mm. the Passion Translation. I love the Passion Translation. Yeah. Because a man's heart can devise his ways, but it's the Lord that directs the it path. It directs our path. And even when yes. we don't go the way that God tells yes, us to sir. go, you still go in the way that he told you to That's go. That's right. Okay. Let me say that again. Come even on. when we Come don't on, go Pastor. the way that God tells us to go, you still go in the way God tells uh-huh. you to go. And you know that. We learned that, mm-hmm. you know, through the example uh-huh. that um, the brother gave us when he didn't go to Nineveh. Mm. <laughs> yeah. See, even though he He's didn't go the way that God way. told him to go, he still went the way God told him to go. He just took the long That's way home. It. That's and it. even though our heart sometimes comes up with a plan or a way of going, mm-hmm. I remember my grandmother used to always say, if the Lord will. Everything they would plan or decide they were going to do, at the end, she would say, if it's the Lord's will. If it's will. the Lord's will. If it's the Lord's will. What was they saying? We're going to align ourselves with God. Yes. We're making plans. But if it's the Lord's will, we're going to do what we said we'll do. But if it's not his will, we're going to do what he tells us to do. That's right. Because it tells us, it says, in all of our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path. So in all of our ways, we've got to know him. Because he covers any and everything that um, having to do with our lives. So we have to make sure that we please God. It's, it has to be our goal to please God in not some things, but in all things. Because yeah. life is crooked, y'all. Come on. Come on. Life is crooked. I like one thing you said when you read it in the Passion that doesn't read when you read it in the King James. Mm-hmm. He said even, well, it reads the same way, but he, you said that even the wicked. Yes, it. Uh-huh. Even the wicked is a uh-huh. part of God's That's plan. right. Good That's God right. Almighty. And we're living in a world right. today, for some of us, I'm 50-something years old. For some <laughs> of us, we've seen things throughout life and now we're getting to a point now where we're seeing things now that we only saw or heard of now we're seeing them live Mm -hmm. and in living color color. we're seeing the wickedness the bible said that hell will increase itself in one translation in another it says enlarge itself itself. (coughs) the bible said it's coming up to meet us my Mm -hmm. god Hell ain't going to remain like we thought. Oh, it's real deep. No, hell is coming up. Mm-hmm. We're, getting the, we're getting nowadays, we're seeing the wicked live and in living color. Mm-hmm. And many of us are saying, boy, we're getting to the end's time. The Bible says don't none of us know. That's it. The angels don't know. Only one that knows is God. That's it. And he reserves that for himself. Mm-hmm. But what we should know by the times that we are seeing mm-hmm. that we're closer now than and we've before. been before. We know that we're closer now. And that's the reason why our mantra for 2021 is the urgency of God. God's God's urgency urgency of of now. now. God's urgency of now. Now. It's now that we got to. What time? It's now. It's now. Lady Willie just exalted us and told us it's now Now. that we press into God. It's now that we lean upon God. It's now that we trust God. I'm talking with everything, not with something. No, he can't be Lord. He said, why you call me Lord, Lord, if you're not going to do what I say? He can't be Lord if you don't allow him to lead you in every area mm-hmm. of your life. He can't be Lord over there in the living room, but you don't allow him to be Lord in the bedroom. And even though, and even if you may not be able to see the forest for the trees, I want you to know that God can still cut a path. Ooh, so he can remove the obstacles. Glory to God. God is able. Mm, Come on, somebody. God yes. is able. Yes. So he can remove the obstacles and he can cut a path through the woods. Mm-hmm. I've been going through this so long. I don't know when I'm going to come out. You can't see your way out. He said, that's good. Because he trust is me. the way out. He said, yeah, that's, that's what I want you not he to be able to see way. it so you can trust me. He says, I am the way, mm. the truth, and the life. Oh, glory to God. And so what we've got to do is we've got to trust and we've got to believe him because he's going to put us on the right road. He's going to set our feet in the right direction. Only thing we've got to do is just trust and believe him because Jesus knows Mm. the the end from the beginning. That's it. Why? Because he's he's the the start and he's the finish. He's the alpha and omega. And omega, the beginning beginning and and the the end. end. My God, anything in between. I'm all all that. Yes. (laughs) That's what we say here at CHOP. It's all all about about him. him. It's all about him. Yeah. He knows where we need to be. He knows where we where he wants us to be. We may want to be somewhere, but he knows where we need to be. We're teaching you this series, the secrets 
to Christian living. Yes. The secrets. Why are they secrets? Because we got to get into that place, place with God that we understand yes. what he's saying to us, where he's direct. It's a secret because the only way you can get it is through the knowledge of him. We just showed you yes. tonight. That's why we're here in Proverbs, the pragmatics to Christian living. This is the third, fourth installment that we're on tonight. But the whole series is the secrets, secrets. To, to Christian, Christian living. living. We're going to hit you back next week yes. with another secret. And once Come you on. start to unlock these secrets, secrets. once you, Psalms 91 yes. says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. Mm -hmm. See, there's some things you can do from the secret place that you can't do out in public. Yes. Uh, <laughs> glory to God. It's some stuff. He said, if you would do it in secret, I'll reward you. Openly. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. And as we, as we start to truly trust God and apply the word of God, then we can truly start living. Wow. See, really some of living. us are not really living. We existed. We're just existing. My God. And God don't want us just to exist, no. you all. He wants us to live. He said, I create, I came that you might have, have life, life and, and life more abundantly. abundantly. I came that you might yes. have the abundant life. Good God Almighty. Yes. Glory to God. It's, it's our time is up, my God. We got so much. But this was good. And, and you know, we're going to continue this. Yes. We're going to continue yes, this. Sir. I pray that you're receiving something yes. from this. Line upon I pray line that you're hearing what said. God wants you to hear. hear. I told you on Sunday, God speaks to us. Yes, it, we come together uh, corporately, but God speaks to us mm -hmm. individually. Yes, he does. And you need to hear what God is saying for you. And for your life. That's it. Yeah, I can't go off of what God told sister so-and-so for her life or brother so-and-so for his life. I got to go off of what God has for me in my life. And the only way I can do that is I have to hear him. him. My God, I got to hear him. Yes. Mary, Jesus' mother, told them. <laughs> she said, whatever, whatever he say, he say do, do it. Whatever he <laughs> say. That's so we, we are we, we exalt you on tonight. Whatever the Lord tell you to do, yes, you do it. Amen. 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus, we love you and we praise yes. you. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this opportunity yes, to share from the wellspring of your word. Now, Father God, we pray that we will apply this word. God, that we will allow it to go deep down in the inner recesses of our souls. Yes. And Father, that it will bring about much fruit in our lives. This is our prayer prayer and our petition unto you. But we ask that you bless the hearers and the doers of your word, oh God, yes. let it not depart from them, but oh God, that they will see the full measure of your weight in your word in their lives. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And we ask, oh God, that those that are not saved, that they will give ear and attention to yes. you and surrender their lives to you, even on tonight. And those that have stepped away, oh God, that they will draw closer and come back to you, oh God, realizing, oh God, that that was not the last dance and that it's not over, that you're, you're, they're, you're still in it with them to win it. Father, we ask right now that your Holy Spirit, oh God, will rest room and abide upon each and every one of us. Give us sweet peace and rest on tonight, Lord. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please join us. If you're in this local area, this next Tuesday, we know today's Tuesday, yes. next Tuesday, a week from now, from 9 to 12, we'll yes. be doing our Feed America food yes. giveaway. If you're in this local area or know somebody in this local area that's in need, please send them out. We'll be mm -hmm. at 1215 Pembroke Road, right there in Oak Grove, Kentucky. Please, everybody's welcome. We need volunteers. We need support. Please come out. Thank all of you for your liberality yes. and giving and in your support. We love you. Love we love you. you with the love of God and we thank yes. God for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. God it bless you. It is our prayer. Amen.